Viruses seem to exist solely to wreck society and bring suffering to humanity. They have cost untold number of lives over the millennia, often knocking out significant chunks of the global population, from the 1918 influenza epidemic which killed 50 to 100 million people, to the estimated 200 million who died from smallpox in the 20th century alone. The current COVID-19 pandemic is just one of a series of ongoing and never-ending deadly viral epidemics. If we were given the choice to magically have a wand and cause all viruses to disappear, most people would probably jump at that opportunity, especially now. What would a world without viruses be like? Would it be better or worse? This is Helios, and here's what would happen. If all viruses disappeared, that would be just the beginning of our problem. Scientists say, if all viruses suddenly disappeared, the world would be a wonderful place for about a day and a half, and then we'd all die, that's the bottom line. All the essential things they do in the world far outweigh the bad things. The vast majority of viruses are not pathogenic to humans, and many play integral roles in propping up ecosystems. Others maintain the health of individual organisms, everything from fungi and plants to insects and humans. For a start, researchers do not know how many viruses even exist. Thousands have been formally classified, but millions may be out there. Nor do scientists know what percentage of total viruses are problematic towards humans. But we do know that phages, or the viruses that infect bacteria, are extremely important. Phages are the primary regulator of bacterial populations in the ocean, and likely every other ecosystem on the planet as well. If viruses suddenly disappeared, some bacterial populations would likely explode. Others might be outcompeted and stop growing completely. This would be especially problematic in the ocean, where more than 90% of all living material by weight is microbial. Those microbes produce about half the oxygen on the planet, a process enabled by viruses. These viruses kill about 20% of all organic microbes and about 50% of all oceanic bacteria each day. By culling microbes, viruses ensure that oxygen-producing plankton have enough nutrients to undertake high rates of photosynthesis, ultimately sustaining much of life on Earth. Researchers studying insect pests also have found that viruses are critical for species population control. If a certain species becomes overpopulated, a virus will come through and wipe them out. It's a very natural part of ecosystems. The process, called kill the winner, is common in many other species as well, including our own, as evidenced by pandemics. If viruses suddenly disappeared, competitive species would likely flourish to the detriment of others. Infection with certain benign viruses even can help to ward off some pathogens among humans. GB virus C, a common blood-borne human virus that is a non-pathogenic distant relative of West Nile virus and dengue fever, is linked to delayed progression to AIDS in HIV-positive people. Scientists also found that GB virus C seems to make people infected with Ebola less likely to die. Likewise, herpes makes mice less susceptible to certain bacterial infections, including the bubonic plague and listeria. Infecting people with herpes virus, bubonic plague and listeria to replicate the mass experiment would be unethical, but the study's authors suspect that their findings in rodents likely apply to humans. The disappearance of viruses would impact the evolutionary potential for all life on the planet, including humans. Because they are constantly replicating and mutating, viruses also hold a massive repository of genetic innovation that other organisms can incorporate. Viruses replicate by inserting themselves into host cells and hijacking their replication tools. If this happens in a gerb-lined cell, eggs and sperm, the viral code could be passed on to the next generation and become permanently integrated. Viral elements account for an estimated 8% of the human genome, and mammalian genomes in general are peppered with around 100,000 remnants of genes originating from viruses. Viral code often manifests as inert pieces of DNA, but sometimes it confers new and useful, even essential, functions. 
In 2018, for example, two research teams independently made a fascinating discovery. A gene of viral origin encodes for a protein that plays a key role in long-term memory formation by moving information between cells in the nervous system. Also, ancient retroviruses are responsible for the human ability to have live births. The most striking example, though, relates to the evolution of the mammalian placenta and the timing of gene expression in human pregnancy. Evidence indicates that we owe our ability to have live births to a bit of genetic code that was co-opted from ancient retroviruses and infected our ancestors more than 130 million years ago. Scientists have only just begun to discover the ways that viruses help to sustain life, because they have only just begun to look. Ultimately, though, the more we learn about all viruses, not just the pathogens, the better equipped we will be to harness certain viruses for good and to develop defences against others that could lead to the next pandemic. Now, thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.